have a session understanding the steps of awakening and realization or knowing of a real self or living in peace and happiness, whatever you want to say. So if we take the first step, <clears throat> we should be curious about the world, who am I, what is the existence, or you can say what is the God. The curiosity is the first step, but at the same time we should also keep in mind that we want to know our real nature to bring an end to the suffering and at the same time we should realize who we are. Now there is a proverb eat, drink, and be merry. It simply means <clears throat> my mind is habitual, obsessed with the objects of pleasure in the world. Obsession, attachment, and we are always busy with those things. So when you are busy with those things of the pleasure seeking objects where the pleasure is not and at the same time we want to know who we are, not possible because why, why it is not possible because my mind says the pleasure is outside and I am searching peace and happiness. So there is always a confusion in the mind. So should we not enjoy the pleasure? No, we should enjoy. But we should change our mind. Second step is the four connections. <coughs> we will continue our journey with these steps. So anytime you feel that, oh, I did not do it. But if you go out of the subject, I will tell you what it means. But the second step is the four connection. I should become a qualified seeker. I'll tell you later. Second is that I should know what is the subject matter. What exactly is the subject matter, what I want to know. Who am I? Only three questions. Who am I? What is the word? And what is the existence? And what will be the result? So the Eastern wisdom, our master says the result is you end suffering. Suffering comes to an end. And we realize our true nature. I will answer that real nature later on. I'm just forming the different steps so that based on your attitude and your behavior and personality, the way I have seen it. That is the second uh, step. What is the third step? I'm giving just a brief introduction and then I will go deeper. <coughs> Science does all the discovery, it understands the material world, it understands the physiology, biochemistry or in any branch with a clarity of two categories. What are the two categories? The first is real and what is unreal. <coughs> But Eastern wisdom creates a third category that is false. 
real false unreal and if we do not understand it clearly and we do not apply in our life the life will remain the same we will go on asking the questions that oh nothing is happening nothing is happening what is, what the, is difference the difference between, between false, false and, unreal? and unreal yes i have two horns on my head this is unreal it does <laughs> not exist non-existent my mind imagines but still it is non-existence that is unreal so, so like, like the mirage, mirage or the rope snake, rope snake? No, it is unreal. Okay. Okay. Unreal, it does not exist. It doesn't, you don't see it. Yeah. It is yeah. not possible. It is an impossibility. <clears throat> but when you say Miraz water, you see it. But when you go close to the Miraz water, it is not there. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. That's, That's the difference. difference. So what happens? The false exist between the real and unreal. Got, Got it. it. Another definition, it appears as real, but it is not. Uh -huh. Got it. The girl appears as a means of great pleasure, but the pleasure is not in the girl. That's, That's false. false. That is false. Yeah. yeah. But I crave for the false. And I still want to know who am I? Not possible. What, what is, is real? real? I mean, that's, that's a pretty, a pretty, I mean, you, you, that's that's a pretty, pretty deep, deep question, question because, because there's, there's probably, probably not, not much, much that, that is real. real but... Ninety percent of the journey, what is real, has to be done by the self-inquiry and meditation practices. Yeah. yeah. But uh, to simply define that real is ever existent. It was present, it is present, and it will remain. Yeah. yeah. Second definition, it is, it never changes. Fourth def, third definition, it is consciousness. Fifth definition, it is self-luminous. What does it mean by self-luminous? It is self-evident. It does not need the help of the mind to know it. It knows itself by itself. Yeah. yeah. So that is where we have to go. So, so really, really there's, there's only, only one, one real, real and everything, everything else, else is false. false. Don't make a conclusion until we discover and we start living into that reality. Okay. okay. That's a very open conclusion. That's what the science does. So yeah. here the scientific understanding doesn't work. Eastern wisdom has its own ways to give you a problem of the mind of the false. Mother had called me about her daughter last year. Daughter is about 12 years old. She has certain problems and challenges. I said, okay, I will take care of it. So I gave one lesson. I, as usual, I send the audio file. So after a few hours, my email shows that there is some unknown email wanted an access to that audio file. But I found the surname is common. It means perhaps it may be from the mother's side. So I send an email. Who is this? She said, I'm sorry. I gave this audio file to my sister's daughter to listen to it. I said, you should have told me. I have no problem. Every session becomes public the moment, especially the group session, becomes public the moment 
I have given. It's not my property. But I did not tell you the what happened before that. She asked me that my daughter and my sister's daughter will attend. I said, I will charge you double. <laughs> she did not agree. <laughs> but she cleverly sent the audio file to her sister's daughter. <laughs> wow. So I said, I told you before that every audio file, every session is not mine once I have given it. Yeah. yeah. But still you did not believe and the mind was full of what was the intention of the mind to save the money. Intention yeah. was not clear to help the daughter. Yeah. yeah. So your sister's daughters will come to know you, you, your mind is already polluted. A clever, you see that clever move, but it's not a clever move for me. I'm very happy. You throw that file to thousands of people, it doesn't make any difference. But now I have understood your mental state. And what is the problem? Your mental state is affecting your daughter. That is the problem. Yeah. yeah. You change yourself and everything will be all right. You kept on listening and she had some tears. I said, no, don't shed the tears. I'm just, I told you. That is how the Eastern wisdom works. I should be 100% clear. Yeah. <clears throat> but that is the false. <clears throat> Why I narrated the story, that is false. So this is the, you can see the third step. What is the fourth step? Now fourth step comes from the second step that what exactly it means a qualified seeker. I have discussed about it a couple of times. On this path, because it has never been taught in our schools, it has never been taught by our parents, it has never been guided to us since our birth, <clears throat> we should know the rules of the, we should know the principles. <clears throat> and we should have certain skill sets. How to explain that I have a driving license, so I know the rules of the road. That is the knowledge part. And I have the skill sets of driving. That is the application part. They, when they both combine, I can drive. That's why I have a driving license. Yeah. yeah. So similarly, That's in this journey, because it goes totally in an opposite direction to find the truth. Science also discovers the truth in the material world. Eastern wisdom discovers the real self inside you. It is a subjective reality. That is an objective reality. Mm -hmm. Science finds the truth in the matter. We find the truth in the consciousness. Yeah. So their approach is totally different. Unless we have the skill sets, we have the, we know the rules, we know the principle. Then I told this mother that this is what happens. The rules of the road says the mind has to be totally clean. It should not have an agenda of duality in a conflict. What it means? Then she asked, I said, you can be a world-class medical doctor. At the same time, you may be a criminal. It works. It works in the science. It will not work in the Eastern West. Yeah. yeah. It will never work in the Eastern West. The mind that wants to be criminal, wants to remain clever, creates a conflict <clears throat> that cannot find the real thing. Very clear.
So then, you know, but my mind moves in a habit, an instinctive, impulsive way. No worries. We will make you a qualified suit. We will take care of that. You don't find Buddha was full of compassion on one hand and a criminal at other hand. You cannot. You cannot. Jesus, Confucius, Socrates, our great masters. Only when the mind is pure, transparent, it can reflect the real self. It will not work. So that is why the, the masters lays down that we have to become a qualified seeker. And so there is a process. Huh? There is a process of becoming a qualified seeker. The next step is... <coughs> Should I leave everything, all my business, profession, relations, and devote myself to, to this journey of so-called spirituality and self-discovery? Master says no. But your attitude, your behavior, your attitude in the mind, behavior and behavioral understanding in the mind, an action in the personal, professional, social, and the family life will make you a seeker. How it is possible, we will teach you. So that, that, that particular aspect is known as karma yoga. Here yoga means a proper, right, good mental attitude. Karma means action in the personal, professional, social life. So all of our actions should not be guided by the ego which creates a conflict all the time, which lives in the delusion all the time, but a proper, right, good mental attitude by which we act in the world. Even whatever we eat, even the way we communicate to our parents, our honey, our, our friends, the way we deal with the situation and the problems. Why we do it? We perform the action in personal, professional, social and a family life to purify the mind. How the action can purify the mind? That's a secret. That's what we are going to talk about. And at <laughs> the same time, this particular step also deals with emotional freedom instead of an emotional dependence. If we have a reason for the emotional delusion and emotional dependence, we get rid of it. So that makes me a qualified seeker. The first step of becoming a qualified seeker. Second step, we know the, we awaken the power of discernment and dispassion in the intellect. You awaken these two powers. What happens to the mind? Mind is always calm, restful. It is never busy. It is always experiencing the sense of freedom. So you get a glimpse of what the entire Eastern wisdom is taking you to, the deeper and the higher journey. You start feeling. When you start driving to Colorado, you know that, that, that heat dissolves completely. Now you start feeling the cool wind. Yeah. So that gives you an idea that now it is approaching the same way. Becoming a qualified seeker, you have such a tremendous faith that yes, what masters are teaching the real self, it is true. So now you have become a qualified seeker. So what happens? Then you awaken the six treasures of the mind. At present, we are always guided, dictated by the enemies in the mind. Duality, conflict, intense attachment, emotional dependence, delusion, conflict and the confusion, reaction, getting upset. 
we are dealing with enemies in the mind all the time. So now you see the next step, you awaken to the six treasures in the mind that is. So we, we, we discuss about what are those six treasures. I used to see a person with an eye of an attachment and a delusion, but now I see with the same eyes are the same. Mind is the same, but my perception has changed. When the perception has changed, it doesn't invite any kind of a conflict and reaction and anxiety. The life has taken a leap by these six stresses. At that stage, this mind is completely pure. When it is completely pure, you have an intense aspiration an intense desire to know the real self. You have common desires to take a cup of tea and talk to someone and doing your personal and professional activities. It just becomes a play and a fun. You are never busy. You feel a sense of freedom inside. And in that sense of freedom, the mind has an intense desire. Only for one thing, to know myself, to know the existence, to know the exact nature of the world. When you have that intensity, then begins the real journey. What is that journey? That journey is known as the self-inquiry. Then every thing that the teacher teaches, the mind receives gets absorbed, understands it. And that journey, depending on the person's ability, depending on the level of ignorance that we have, we continue the journey. And that journey begins with, even though the meditation practices continues from the first step, but now the real meditation begins. If I gave you a practice of meditation that is very higher, your mind will say, this guy is crazy. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> I know it. So that's how I personalize the program. I'm teaching a guy in Austria. He's the highest level of a seeker. He says, when you are talking, I'm already in the state of meditation. So after seven sessions, I still give one practice of meditation to him. Otherwise, he's ready. He's ever ready. He's changed a lot. So depending on personalization. So this, uh, this has got the self-inquiry has three steps. Listening and learning. Contemplation and reflection is very important. If I do not reflect what I have learned, what I have heard from a teacher, that shows the sign that I don't have an intense desire. Why I don't have an intense desire? Because I do not have a six treasures in the mind. Why I don't have a six treasures in the mind? Because I did not awaken to the power of discernment and discretion. Why I did not awaken to the power of discernment and discretion? Because I'm not a qualified seeker. And go on. Again, you return to the first step. It's a very, very logical, extremely scientific, if you say so, the journey. Every text written by these great masters, they start from a different, for a different seeker. <laughs> So unless you know the first few steps, then only you can understand why the master has started the text from this. One master starts from the mind. He only talks about the mind in more than 50, 60 steps. 
another master starts from the that you become a qualified seeker you are a person you satisfy your mind you change the attitude you do a lot of practices you feel some people other master they start no start living in the world like this so once we follow the path of the self inquiry so the three steps first step is listening and learning followed by contemplation and reflection don't i have a time when i say the happiness is my essential nature for example happiness is my essential nature so i hear it i have completed the session and then happiness dis dissolves and disappears from my life yeah. yeah so because i could not retain i received the knowledge but i could not retain the knowledge because i did not contemplate and reflect it but why i cannot retain it because the mind is totally engaged and confused in clarity about the real false and the unreal that is how we observe that is how we analyze that is how we 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 guide people everything is clear in in our journey i gave you one example let us take second example i heard that happiness is my nature <laughs> happiness is my essential nature it is like the sweetness of a sugar you put the sugar in anything you find sweetness in a desert in ice cream in a lemon water you put this sugar. sweetness does not leave its nature the sugar does not leave its nature that is the meaning of essential nature so i was giving a group lesson i told you that now the time has changed so at his own time it's uh, 4:30 <coughs> that's why i moved you at 6 so there is a couple attending the session and i told him that your honey becomes angry but at the same time you know happiness is your essential nature how you will respond so she told me that i will remain happy inside his anger should not dictate over my mind i said that is it if you do that you are a seeker no no but if question comes from him that if <coughs> if the person continues to be angry he is searching happiness by becoming angry because he is not able to fulfill his expectations from you you are learning eastern wisdom it is your greater responsibility to remain in that state of calm and poise it means he will not change he will change how come he will change he will see the presence of your calmness maybe after a few sessions maybe after a few tough situations you can exert the influence because of your calmness as long as we do not realize the impact of the calmness that is present in me is definitely going to exert an influence to the people outside i don't have a faith so when i don't have a faith then i start fighting that is why i start fighting even intellectually knowing that happiness is my nature mm -hmm. So I'm not a seeker. So then I have to work on you first to make you a seeker before you arrive at a conclusion and experience that happiness is your nature. They were very happy. The entire group is very happy with 
So once we start this self-inquiry, as you are on a journey, the time comes, you will say, the seeker declares, now I don't have, it is an end of suffering. I realize what it is. What is the realization? End of suffering. But still another realization still looms. What is that another realization? No, you told me the journey is about knowing the real self, knowing what is the nature of the world and what is the existence. That is the ultimate step. So what happens? What is that? Can we define realization? Yes, we can define. Realization is not, I will see the real self. <laughs> that is not a realization. What, what is that? Can you say, say that again? again? Realization is not, I will see the real self. The moment you say, I will see the real self, you have not even taken the first step of the Eastern Yeah, Yeah, yeah you're, that, that, that's, that's foolish, foolish to say. To say. Realization is not that I will become real self. That is another foolishness. Yeah. yeah. Realization means that I know I am the real self. Yeah, yeah because, because you can't, you can't become, become something, something that you, that you already, already are. are. You already are. Rightly okay. said. Yeah. Yeah. What you are already, you cannot become that. Exactly. exactly. And becoming means a change. Real self does not change. It is an unchanging reality. The moment we were born from the womb of the mother, we became infant and as we started speaking and i started addressing myself i am i need this i desire this i want this uh, i am your son and you are my dad the moment i started using i that i then i became 10 years old body has tremendously changed the mind has changed i gather a lot of knowledge I still use the same I. So unconsciously, I don't know that I am not the body, but I prove myself that that I is the same. Yeah. yeah. 20 years, I is the same. I got married, I became husband, but I is the same. So we discover that I, which we have been using, but due to the false identification, we have to remove all the false that is surrounded by the mind in our thought, in our speech, in our action. That is the second step. We should be very clear about what is real, what is false, and what is unreal. Another question also comes, no, no, why you are talking of the false and the unreal? You talk directly about the real. I don't know anything about the real now. I'm living my life in either the false or the unreal, imaginary life. No, no, but why don't you talk directly about the real self? So when people ask this question and uh, I don't answer, they think that it is not possible. <laughs> so it is, it is like a puzzle. It is like a puzzle of whether the chicken is first or the egg is first. It is that delusion. It is that confusing. Understand that how the master answers that. So now first tell me about the real self. So why you are insisting that first I should tell you about the real self, about the chicken? <laughs> Where the chicken came from the egg. 
know from where the act came. So that yeah, yeah. The, the question will remain unanswered. Why not start from where you are? Why don't you start from what you think you are? Start exploring so that you can filter out what you are not. And when you can filter out what you are not, you have already found yourself. What, what it means? It means so simple. Anything that you cannot filter out. Yeah, yeah so, so it's, it's like, like if, if I, I try, try to say, say I'm, I'm Nick, Nick. No, no, I'm not. Or like if, if I try, try to, to say, say I'm my body, body no, I'm, I'm not. not. Like, like, so you, you, like, like, you, you eliminate, eliminate, you eliminate all, all those things, things and, and then it comes back, back to one thing. thing. Comes back to, now there is a secret behind it. Who is negating? Who is negating I am not the body? Who is negating I am not the neck? Who is negating I am not the son? Who is negating I am not the husband? So that who, that knower is always present everywhere since the start of the journey until the end. Yeah. So that cannot be negated. But who negates what I am not? who negates what I am not and ultimately which cannot be negated which was present in throughout my life from moment to moment. Yeah. yeah. That is what the real self is. Ten people, ten young students were there in a monastery the master said, go to a village and bring some food, begging the food. But be sure that ten, you ten are going, I want the ten students back. So you have to take care of each one. So on the way they found a river, they crossed the river, and then they started counting if they are the 10 or not. <clears throat> so one boy started counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there is only nine. Second guy also counted, there is only nine. Third, and they started crying, they said that at least one of our friend drowned in the river. A monk was passing through and he was looking at it. He said, no, I have to solve this puzzle. So the monk said, you all ten are here. They are intact. No one lost. No, but we counted. So he picked up a boy, he said, you start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The moment he said nine, monk moved the finger of that boy, here is the tenth. You are not counting yourself. <laughs> That gives two answers. Mind is so much obsessed, conditioned by the society, by the culture, by the religion, by the dogma, by the belief, by the signs, that it always has a habit to see outside. Even if we, it wants to search, who am I? It wants to find out in the world outside. How it can find, how can I find myself outside in the world, in the objective reality? That is known as objective reality. What is separate from me? What is different from me? Whatever is known and visible by the sense organ in the mind, is the objective reality. I am a subject 
I cannot become an object. The moment I become an object, I am not. Yeah, yeah. You're, right. you're right. I am not. <laughs> so that's a very subtler path. And if we do not follow these steps, we cannot achieve. We will remain like a boy who never count himself as the tenth one. Because the mind is always outside. And what is outside is not me. What is outside is not me. It's a different matter that you go to the airport, they say, where is your passport? No, but I'm alive in front of you. I don't believe in you, even if you are alive. I have to check your passport, scan it, and then I will check. <laughs> we are so much heavily conditioned. So this conditioning of the mind causes the impurity and causes the falsehood in our nature. Unless we remove this false, we cannot achieve. And the moment I become aware of, I know I am the real self. And that real self perceives the world outside. It perceives the most beautiful world. It perceives the world is so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Until now, the mind has been living in the world created by the false. <laughs> Unless we remove that falsehood, we cannot see that this beautiful word is manifestation of the same higher consciousness or the existence. But then something also happens. Something also happens. Ah, I have to talk about the royal secret and open secret. One master says it's a royal secret, and it is an open secret. What do you mean? Why are you confusing me? So he says, do you know what do you mean by secret? Secret means, you know, uh, that thing is known only by the few people. That is what the, what do you mean by secret? You have certain secret that your father knows or you know. Only two people. That is what we, we call it as a secret. No, but then why you have added royal, royal secret? Yeah, it's royal. And at the same time, it is an open secret. It's an utter confusion. Only when you become a seeker, you unfold that secret. For a seeker, it is an open secret. And the moment you reveal, the seeker reveals the secret, he finds it's a, definitely a royal secret. And what is that royal secret? Where the real self is, there the God is sitting all the time, with all the locations, in all of our attitude, whether we are living in ignorance or not, it is that God is living there in that real self. So what is that real secret? The moment I know I am real self, at the simultaneously, instantly, instantly, I also realize the God is sitting with me. What do you mean by that? Existence, consciousness. When that, that we are going to understand in detail. I just gave you the royal secret that the moment we say God with the name and the form, that, that form. God with the name and the form is one thing. God as a consciousness is another thing. So there are different manifestations. 
all the religions have explained differently uh, yeah. Yeah. what happens the eastern wisdom brings them all together they said here it is i'm just using the word god you can use the ex existence okay. okay so the moment i know the real self i also know the supreme self just use that okay, okay. I, use, I, I know the existence also. The moment I know the existence, I know the exact nature of this world. And when I know the exact nature of the world, because of the utter confusion, because of my expectations from the world, I enter into this stress. But now I know the exact nature of the world. Yeah. yeah. So there is no suffering. I know I am over expecting from one person, which he or she cannot deliver to me. Because I know I am the real self, one aspect. Second aspect, what I am expecting from him and her is already present in me. So the question of entering into the suffering, conflict, and the confusion dissolves and drops and melts away. There is no yeah. confusion left. There is no expectations left. Why there is no expectations left? Because there is a sense of emotional freedom. Why there is a sense of emotional freedom? Because that real self is of the nature of love, Peace, happiness, compassion is there. In compassion, you cannot have an emotional dependence. In love, you cannot have an emotional bondage. When you know that I am the love, and still you are expecting love from others, not possible. When the nature of the sugar is sweetness, that sugar is not going to search anything which contains the sweetness. It is only the sugar that contains the sweetness. So, so okay. okay. I'm, I'm understanding. understanding. What about, what about like, like, so, so if, if I, I so, so, let me, let me get, get this straight. straight. So, so if, if I, I feel, feel, let's, let's just, just say, say you, you love, love me. me. Okay. okay. So, so if, if, I, if I if I feel love, love from, from Grish, really, really like I'm just feeling, feeling my own love. love. Grish says, "I love you." Who has understood that Grish loves you? Who in you? And that who in you is your ego coming okay. from the mind. <clears throat> the moment, one option, when we are a non-seeker, when we did not follow the path of the Eastern wisdom, now you followed the path of the Eastern wisdom, you know I am the real self, you know I am, the, I am love. Now yeah. at that standpoint, I say I love you. What is your response? Don't be in a hurry. The moment you are in a hurry, you will miss the point. I, when I say that I love you, thank you very much. I appreciate internally, you know, love is nothing but the existence. Finished. Do you, it is not personal. It is not individual. But what, but what if, if I, I do, do tell, tell you, you I love you? you? Like, what, what if, if I, I do, do feel, feel like, like I love you? Because I, I do love you. love you. No, I do feel that I love you. Two options. I in ignorance says, or I as a real self says. It has two different meanings. Okay. okay. I as an ego says I love you. It is a matter of attachment. It has to do with some expect. I'm benefiting you directly or indirectly, so you love me. 
Suppose I don't benefit you in any possible way. Will you still love me? <laughs> so there comes that I is still not the real self. The moment I is the real self, then I express I love you. It makes sense. Then you are not at all dictated and affected, even if I say I don't love you. You say I still love you. Why? Because I'm the love. There is nothing that is, there is nothing that I can do. I say so you have a realization. You are talking of the tenth, the last step, and you have to start from the first step. <laughs> so intellectually, intellectually, the more we ask the questions before we resolve all the doubts. We have a clarity by following the first nine steps, then definitely we can say, my master says, I cannot do anything except love you all. What should I do? It's not a matter whether you like me or you dislike me. But he used to say that, you know, there is an overflowing of that pure emotion towards you all. And in that emotion, I see that you all are becoming me. What he meant? He said, yeah. the way the right hand cannot hurt the left hand, the same way I feel about you. How can I, how can I not love you? Because that, you know, after realization, you are blossoming in love. And when you express that love, it becomes a compassion. That is what the Buddha did. So now they both have to use, we, including the realized people, have to use the word I. But that I coming as a real self or that I coming as an ego, based on my expectation, my likes and dislikes, that makes the truly difference. So when I have branded myself, I coming from the ego, it is already a false self. Yeah. yeah. And that false self says that I will love you. It does not mean anything. It does not mean anything to an awakened. And it means everything. Those who is obsessed, attached, emotionally dependent, lives in the emotional bondage with reference to the objects and the people outside in the world. It means everything. So he's already living in ignorance. He has to suffer. That sweetness of the sugar is not there. Yeah. yeah. Sweetness becomes salty. <laughs> I like you. That is why I love you. That is the statement from the ego. And from the real self, I love you for the sake of love. That becomes compassion. But in order to experience and realize that, we have to follow the 10 steps, 10 or 11 steps, whatever the steps that I just did. I should not jump from the first to the last. A staircases has <laughs> many steps. I cannot jump directly <laughs> on to the last step. But now ask yourself why I cannot jump into the last step. What is holding me? And from where the journey starts? I feel, I feel like, like the journey, journey has started. started. Journey has already started, but yes, you may jump with clarity. There are people, you know, who may jump. But with the clarity and understanding. Journey has already started. That's why we have been meeting. That is very clear. So that curiosity is already there. Our intellect is constantly looking for that entity, which is different than the I, which is different and separate and free from all kinds of confusion. The intellect sees it, but the same intellect is dictated by the mind. 
in our activities of the life, we fall back into the same heavily conditioning at location with people in relationship, in seeking happiness in the world outside, thinking that this time I will be happy. Curious, like, like if, if, if there, there only is, is the real, real self, self then, then and there, so, so there are only, only you and, you and I, I are with the, the real, real self, self so there so really, really is no difference between you and I and or anything for that matter and there only is love like what about how do you when you meet another human being in the bodily form that let's say is not a good person or that is angry or evil how do you do you have to feel love towards them or like how do you handle that in the bodily form because they still are the real self so do you look at them for what they are which is you essentially do you know what i'm saying yes who labels the other person is a crazy guy is not a good person who labels so only as an individual consciousness i label that you are good and bad okay, okay. So from the stem, you have jumped to the 20th step without realizing. Uh, so that is so just a question, question that came, that came to my, my mind. mind. Buddha, last thing, it's very important. Buddha was passing through a forest where uh -huh. a decoy, it's a real life story in the life of the Buddha. And the name of that decoy was Angulimal. The meaning of the Angulimal that whosoever used to cross through the forest going to their homes, he used to cut their finger and he used to make a rosary putting into putting around his neck. And he used to take away all the valuables and the money, etc. And he used to give it to his family. That's how, that was his livelihood. So many disciples of the Buddha said, please don't cross this forest, you will meet the Dukkha. He said, no, I am going there. So Buddha was there in the forest and that Angulimal, that Dukkha appeared. Aren't you scared? Why should I be scared? Aren't you scared of the death? Ah, I'm beyond death. He meant that I'm not the body. <laughs> One day the body has to die. So my <laughs> friend, one day the body has to die. You claim that you have killed me, but one day the body has already to die. So I, I already declared that body is died. That the guard stared into his eyes. That's crazy stuff, you know, you see that. Why you are killing those people? I kill for my family. Very good. So while killing, don't you feel the pain? Yes, I feel the pain. Does any of the members of your family share the pain of killing? Yes, because they share. That's why they love me. Very good. They said, I love it. You tie me around a tree. I will not leave the place. Go to your house. Find out from everyone. Are they sharing your pain? Your nightmare. How many people you have killed? Okay, so the guy went to the home and then first, honey, come, don't you share the pain? Oh, honey said, why should I share the pain? It's your duty, you are my husband. You have to earn money and feed me. I don't share your pain. Get lost, bring the money. So he went to his two kids it says, you are my dad. 
you make us happy. You don't want us to share your pain. <coughs> and he came back to the Buddha thinking, what is this? Why am, why am I killing people? For the sake of the family. And the family is not sharing any pain. <laughs> totally confused. <laughs> He prostrated, touched the feet of the Buddha. He became one of the greatest monk under the Buddha. Mm -hmm. So when you see yourself that you are dependent on others or someone is dependent on you because of your mental perception, because of your mental labeling, you are already living in ignorance. So even the people whom you blame are not good or bad. I have to research and find out who in me is labeling that person good or bad. Putin is worst for the Ukraine. Putin is the best for his country. He says, you know, I'm saving you from restricting Ukraine to join NATO. Who is good and bad? Hundreds and thousands of people are killed. So when the Russian forces kill the Ukraine, it is a victory. When the Russians are killed, it is a defeat. In both the cases, the people are killed. I have changed my perception. Who is good and bad? It does not work in the world of the existence. It only works in the world of ego. Thank, Thank you. you.